Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kaylee and today we are doing a huge book haul. I have 38 books for you guys today and I am so excited. So because there are so many books, I went ahead and did a bunch of research and found exactly what tropes are in each book I'm about to name. So that I'm not reading the back of each book and spending a lot of time on each individual book. So I'm really excited. I have read none of the books I'm about to talk about. I've heard briefly about a couple of them but I'm mostly going off the tropes that I came across. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so I have three giant piles behind me. Um, starting with the first one, this book is everywhere at the moment. She's kind of the hot commodity, Emily Henry, and this is called Happy Place. I put a little note in each one so I knew exactly what I was reading. People are saying it is about chosen family, best friends, friends and lovers, long distance, grief and loss, second chance romance and forced proximity so I heard this is like a bittersweet book everyone is in tears when I'm watching their reading vlogs so I need to be in the mood to be emotional when I think I'm going to read this one it's opposite of always this one is time traveling teen romance grief and emotional impact all the books that have the orange sticker on the side are all from the thrift shop I always go to. It's in Dayton, Ohio called Dollar Book Swap. I talk with them all the time, but they have the best prices and they are so sweet. Um, everything was $1.25, which is why I have such a large haul today. Um, the ones that don't have the sticker are all from Amazon uh, besides that one Dollar Tree book, but the rest are from Dollar Book Swap. And then I am stoked for this because I really like dark romances. And this is part of the Monsters and Muses. This is book one, Promises and Pomegranates by Sav R. Miller. And it is the most stunning cover. So for my notes, I wrote spicy, toxic, dark romance, addicting, mafia romance, and arranged marriage. So this sounds like it's going to be super interesting and full of action. So I'm really excited to see exactly what this series is about um i really want to dive into it now but part of me is like should i wait until the fall and do the more dark romances then i don't know i just got done reading the akatar series and there's a lot of dark romance in that so i was kind of really hoping to maybe dive into something similar i don't know but this sounds really good okay so now we have when in rome and i had to get this because i'm in ohio and we have a ton of family in kentucky so i found out this was rome kentucky that got my attention okay so this I'm pretty sure it's about a girl that booked a trip or was driving to a trip and she's thinking it was Rome Italy and it turns out it was Rome Kentucky this one says grumpy sunshine small town romance and a rom-com so I'm gonna read just one line from the back opposites certainly attract for a stranded pop star and a small town baker and the charming slice of romance from Sarah Adams we have Our Italian Summer, and anything with Italian in it, I'm like, yes, please. Um, so this one is Travel Vibes, Grief, and Self-Discovery, Time Travel, and Italian Love Story. So that sounds really interesting. For some reason, I wasn't expecting it to be a sad story, but all the reviews, I was trying to find reviews that didn't give away, like, the details of the story, but they were saying it had them in tears and that it was quite sad, so... I think I had to be in the mood for this one as well. It's three generations of women in the Ferrari family who need to heal the broken pieces of their lives on a trip of a lifetime through picturesque Italy. So that sounds really cute. Okay, so this is a series, A Lie for a Lie. This is by Helena Hunting. Yes. Okay, so pregnancy trope, second chance romance, hockey trope, and instant attraction. That sounds really good. So... It says instant attraction, chance meeting, a second shot at love. Okay, so it's supposed to be kind of a steamy book and y'all know I love that. So I'm excited to read this one. Oh, this one's really cute. Okay, Love and Luck. I just got done reviewing the Love and Gelato for my May TBR. Go ahead and watch that after this. I'll link it down below, but that was really cute. So I got the two follow-up books. This one is Love and Luck. And this one is about Ireland sightseeing family bonding and adventure I guess she finds this broken heart guidebook for touring Ireland and she goes on that trip 
to go ahead and seek all these different spots on it. It's a really unique plot, so I'm curious to see how she unfolds that. And then while we're talking about that series, and they are all standalones, so you don't have to read them in order. Um, oh my, where did I put the paper? Oh, here it is. Okay. So it takes place in Greece. Friends to lovers, lighthearted, and summer vibes is pretty much what everyone was saying about it. And a lot of people were saying this was their favorite out of all three. And that if they had to reread one over and over again, it would be this one. So I'm really curious to get to this one. I think this might be the third. But I'm pretty sure they have different characters in all three. That's why they're technically standalones. Everyone has talked about this series over and over and over. And I'm curious to see what the hype is. It's Twisted Love. I have yet to read any of them. Um, this one is Brother's Best Friend, Grumpy Sunshine, Dark Romance, and Spice. And the front says he has a heart of ice, but for her he'd burn the world. I love that trope when it's like basically they hate the world but you. I think that's so hot. So I'm really curious to see how this unfolds. You are the light to my dark sunshine. Without you I'm lost. That's the line that they have at the top and the back. This is going to be super good. I can just tell. Yeah, I'm excited to see how that plays out. The Summer Broken Rolls. Another gorgeous cover. Honestly, almost all of them have beautiful covers. This is a young adult romance. It takes place at Martha's Vineyard. And apparently, when she's talking about certain spots, you can go ahead and Google it and look at them along the way. Which I loved that about Love and Gelato. It's naming real historic spots throughout Florence, Italy, and you can look at them as you read the story so it's easier to picture it. I love that. So apparently that's the same for this. And then they fall in love at a wedding, an unlikely couple, and then young adult romance. I think I read that. But yeah, that sounds really cute. Ooh, the cover of this one honestly I think is the most beautiful out of all the ones I got. It might be my most beautiful cover in general, like even throughout my bookcases. Uh, my Dark Romeo. I love, love, love that historic art. I think it's so beautiful, the different angels. It's gorgeous. Okay, so this one, I haven't heard anyone talking about this. I've only seen it mentioned once, and her description of it had me hooked. I instantly added it to my cart. Okay, so this is Arranged Forced Marriage, Enemies to Lovers, which y'all know I love that trope, Age Gap, uh, Dual Point of View, and A Billionaire Romance. So that sounds really good. It was supposed to be a harmless kiss at a lavish debutante ball. But unlike his namesake, my Romeo isn't driven by love. He's fueled by revenge. Okay. To him, I'm a chess piece leveraged his revels betroth. To me, he is a man deserving of poison, a dark prince I refuse to marry. He thinks I'll accept my fate. Why well, plan to rewrite it? And in my story, Juliet doesn't die, but Romeo, he perishes. That sounds so good. I am so excited. Okay, so these two, one I have never heard been talked about, but I found this one at the Dollar Tree of all places. Um, they do have a book section. So sometimes they have some great books. This one's called Makeup Breakup. I had to resort to Amazon book reviews to figure out what the heck it was about because no one on Instagram posted about it and no one on the Lemon 8 app posted about it. So let's see. Um, it's a toxic love, grumpy sunshine, a second chance romance, and spicy tension. It says a delightful, clever, enemies to lovers rom-com full of sunshine and a little bit of extra heat. It sounds really good. And I think they're co-workers, like a co-work romance. And it's not very thick, so I think that would be a quick read. This one, I'm not going to lie, I was a little disappointed once I started reading the actual reviews a little bit. Like I said, I didn't want to find any of the spoiler alert ones, but... Just seeing the quick little tropes written out in the Lemon 8 app, I was like, oh my goodness, I thought this was so much different than what it's appearing to be. Um, because everyone is talking about this and the cover is beautiful, but it's not what I thought. Um, apparently it's not a rom-com, even though it's called romantic comedy. Okay, so it's not a rom-com. Uh, it's politically correct, which a lot of people weren't liking. It's a celeb romance, one normal person. If you have ever read Red, White, and Royal Blue, you'll know that there's a lot of email exchanges throughout the text, like half the book. That's how this one's supposed to be, which I personally don't mind, but if you don't like that kind of exchange throughout text, then this might not be the one for you. But honestly, when they're talking about how it's politically correct in things, and it's just not supposed to be like a rom-com like it's looking like it's supposed to be, 
Um, I kind of have lost the urge to read it. Um, we'll see. I'll get to it eventually, but it's not high on my list at the moment. If you ended up liking it, let me know in the comments if I should actually give it a try for June or July. If not, then I'll push it off a little bit. Okay, so that was one pile. We have two more piles. The Song of Achilles. I am super pumped to read this book. I am so excited. Quite a few people have talked about if they could choose one book to be their favorite, it would be this one. And that's saying a lot because there's a lot of incredible books. So this one is, this has some real historic motions in it, but it also has a lot of fantasy aspects. Greek mythology, retelling, friends, lovers, forbidden romance. That is what I have heard about it so far, and it sounds really good. I think the cover is so neat, too. Now we have book lovers, and everyone's talking about this one as well. This one is Small Town Romance, Sister Love, Workplace Romance. I, besides those little comments I just made, I'm really not sure exactly what it's about, so I'm going into this one totally blind. Now we had the Midnight Library, and this one has great reviews as well, but it's different than I thought it was going to be. For some reason, I thought they'd be meeting at the library or college library at midnight, and they, like, slowly fall in love. I think that's just my hopeless romantic mind coming up with twist things when I see a title, but I think this is actually different than that. Um, it's a lot darker than I was anticipating. I thought it was going to be, like, a lighthearted little summer romance or something, no, apparently it's about mental health, suicide attempt, it's set in England, and it has magical realism. But even though it sounds awfully dark, a lot of people are saying this is an incredible book, so I am still excited to read it. I have so many good ones to choose from. Um, it's Not Summer Without You by Jenny Han, and I have so many books from her now all of a sudden. That looks so adorable. So she did a recovering of all three. It's a series. And they are beautiful. And they're also summery and just beautiful. Um, is it really summer without the beach or the boys? So this one is about losing a loved one. Now a TV show is based on these book series. It's a second book in the series. It's a summer romance and it's about chasing an ex. So I can't believe I have so many mystery thrillers in this haul because y'all know I mostly just do romance or I have dipped my toes into fantasy and I really enjoy it so far. But I do have quite a few thrillers in here. One of Us is Lying and a lot of people are talking about this book right now. Apparently it's like psychologically just messes with you. So I'm excited to read it. It's a young adult mystery. Five people walk into detention, four walk out alive. And it's supposed to be like really diverse with the characters. None of them are the same. So I'm excited to see. It kind of gives me clue vibes when I read the back. Um, trying to figure out exactly who the murderer is. Bayview High still isn't safe. So I guess a series of murders have occurred. I don't know. This one definitely is going to be a fall read. <laughs> this one sounds kind of dark too. But a lot of people are obsessed with it. It's the last thing he told me. And I have seen this absolutely everywhere. It's becoming a TV show, I think on Apple TV. And it's mystery, emotional family, navigating being a step parent and searching for answers. I feel like if I'm going to dip my toes into the thriller world, this might be a good one to start with. It has just so many raving reviews. I'm trying to become more well-rounded, guys. I'm trying to branch out of just romance, although my heart will forever be a hopeless romantic, and that will probably always be my favorite genre. This one is My Banks and His Keeping, and I really enjoy Maya's writing. So this one is a slow burn, which a lot of her books are slow burn, and I really enjoy the trope. It's paranormal romance, which when I read that, I don't know what to picture when I was saying paranormal romance. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> And then it's steamy and it's a mystery. It sounds totally different than the Breathless trilogy I just read from her. And that was really good. I have a review coming for that soon. I think I have like 12 books left or something. Okay, so I got the selection series. And this is all from the Dollar Book Swap. I have to go buy the middle one. I think it's the third. It's called The One. And I had to buy that from Amazon. But the rest I was able to thrift. That's what I'm saying, guys. They just have, they are so hip with the books that are popping off right now. Um, there is a show on this now called The Selection. I think it's on Netflix, so I want to watch that after I read the books. Um, so book one, 
35 girls, one crown, lighthearted Hunger Games-esque girl drama. Although I really just want to dive into the TV show, I want to do a series where I read the books and then I watch the shows or movies after. Uh, what inspired that was May's TBR. I did Love and Gelato, and then I watched the film after. Shocker, the film did not live up to the book whatsoever, but that kind of got me excited to maybe start that. So it's a competition of a lifetime, and it kind of gives Bachelor vibes. Book two of the selection series, it's a unique love story for this one. Then we have The Air, and this one is book four and it's 35 suitors one princess royal romance strong women and then we have the fifth and final book called the crown it's really pretty the different lavenders and lilacs so for this one i couldn't find too much besides she didn't think she'd fall for any of the 35 suitors but the end had a surprise for her so that'll be interesting to see who actually catches her eye or if she doesn't choose anyone at all so this one looks really good. The cover is just absolutely stunning. It's a whole new world. And this is a retelling of Aladdin. I think that's what I wrote. Yeah, Aladdin retell enemies and a twisted ending. This just sounded so good when I was reading the back. And then um, on this cover, it says, what if Aladdin had never found the lamp? So this is gonna make a totally different story than the Disney Aladdin. Um, I have the friend zone. Okay, so we have friends to lovers, infertility issues, friends with benefits, and sad and emotional. So for some reason, I thought this was gonna be a lighthearted book, but I think it's actually a lot deeper than what I'm anticipating. We have the dating plan, and this cover is so pretty. I love the floral work, and I love the purple. The dating plan, fake engagement, spicy second chance romance. So I guess in my thriller era, cause now we have the silent patient. This is trending everywhere. Literally everyone's talking about it. It wouldn't be surprised if it's a show or if it's going to be a show. It is so popular. Um, unexpected plot twist, psychological thriller, deception and murder. So apparently this has an ending that no one saw coming. So I'm really excited to get into it. Then we have another Jenny Han, and this is Always and Forever. And now I officially have all three in the series, and this is a TV show. Um, this is a young adult romance, bittersweet and college exploration. So I guess this book's a little sad. Her heart is going in two different directions as she's leaving senior year and going into college. So I'm really excited to dive into this series. I haven't read any of it, and I have not watched the show yet. So we have The Jet Setters, and this cover is beautiful. Um, this one totally took me by surprise as well. For some reason, I thought this was going to be a lighthearted European, I don't know, setting. I didn't think it was going to be anything deeper than maybe like a quick romance. But I guess this has a little bit of a darker side as well. It's about multiple perspectives, reunited, estranged family, and suicide triggers. So that's all I have to go off. It's a dysfunctional family. And I guess they're going on a cruise. Um, they're going on a Mediterranean cruise. I don't know. It sounds so dark, but then the back has comments saying that it's sexy and engrossing. So I wonder if it's, I really, my mind just doesn't know what to think of this book just from reading the reviews. <laughs> now we have two military romance books and I love military romance. And uh, we have this one and usually I do not like people on the cover, but this one's okay. This is Stay With Me and it is book two of the Come Back To Me series. So I can't start this one. I need to get the others, apparently. Um, it is a wounded marine, forbidden romance, grumpy sunshine, and some spice. So that's going to probably be really cute. I just love military romance. Then we have the same author, Mila Gray. And this one is not part of that series. This is a standalone. This one is called This Is One Moment. Military romance, slow burn, a strong female lead, wounded soldier with PTSD. I got another Christmas book, I'm trying to slowly build that collection for December, One Day in December, and this is by Josie Silver. She's a very popular author. I have yet to read anything from her. Um, a winter rom-com, love at first sight, slow burn romance, and friendships. This sounded so good. I'm really excited to read this, but I'm definitely waiting until Christmas time. And then I also got this one from that thrift store. 
This is by Beth Moore and it's called Breaking Free. This is a Christian book and it's about self-discovery, um, finding inner peace and walking with Christ. So when I was in the bookstore, I opened a few different pages and I read the different Bible verses she included in the different daily devotions and it just sounds like a really good book that's going to make you stop and think about your actions. I'm so excited to dive into my June TBR. A lot of these are going to get wrapped and I'm going to do a number generator to pick them. So that is the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you got some book inspiration. If you like this way how I did it where I include just the tropes instead of reading the back of every individual book, let me know because when I do a haul, usually there's quite a few books. So yeah. I hope you guys liked this format. If you do, let me know and go ahead and subscribe. I have a bunch of great videos lined up for after this one that I think you would enjoy. Go ahead and follow me at Gracious Intentions on Instagram and I'll see you in my next video.